Before I start working on this search here, I want to show you the function that I'm going to be using. It's the index of function that you can use on array uh, in JavaScript. So if you have an array in JavaScript, you can use this function to find the first index of an element if the element exists. Otherwise, it's going to be minus one if the element doesn't exist. So we can use a reverse check on this minus one so that we can find out if an element actually exists in an array. So it's a, it's a smart thing to do, but it's very efficient because this index of method is pretty fast. So let's go back to the application and let's, let's close this for now. I'm just going to go into the component and right before this function, I'm going to create another function and I'm just going to call it search employee. So search employees may be better. And it's going to take a key and that's going to be a string. Okay. So again, it's not going to return anything. So I'm going to pass in void as the return type and then do open and close curly braces. So what I want to do is to define a new array where I can store all of the employees that match the actual key. So to do this, I'm just going to create a constant and I'm just going to call it result, which is the result of all the employee. And I'm going to set it equal to, well, I have to give it a type first since we're using TypeScript. So that's going to be of type employee array. And I'm going to initialize it as an empty array, just like that. Oops. So my column. So now we can use this constant to store all of the employees that match this key here, or either their name or their email matches the, the actual key or something else. So here uh, I'm just going to create a loop. So I'm going to do for every employee. Well, I have to define this first so constant employee um, of the employee list. So this employees. So we're going to loop over all of the employees that we have in the actual application. So this employees here is this employees array that we define up here. So that holds all of the employees on the page. So we're going to loop through all of them. So let's go down. And we're going to come back here. Okay, so we define this temporary variable or this local variable here to hold all of the employees uh, whose name or email or job title match this key here. And then we're going to, if they do match the key, then we're going to put them in this result here so that we can fill the other list. So what I want to do now, I want to do my check. So I want to do if for that employee that I have here, Okay, I'm going to put their name in lowercase. So I'm going to do that employee name and I want this to be to lowercase. Okay, because I want everything to be lowercase. And then I want to say if the index of this key exists inside of it. So I'm going to do key and then do to lowercase as well so that they can both be in the same case, just like that. And then I check to see if this is not equal minus one, which means we found it. So minus one. So that's going to be the check. And I'm going to go over this in just a second. So in that case, what we want to do, we want to add that employee into this list. So we can call results and we can just push and we're going to push the employee in the current iteration, which is this employee right here. Okay, so we need to close this and then remove this extra parenthesis. So just to understand what this is doing, right? So we're going to iterate or loop over all of the employees, right? All of them. And then we're going to see for every single one of them. So this constant employee here, we're going to say check for the name. We're going to turn that lane uh, name into lowercase or uppercase. It doesn't matter. And we're going to do index of the key, which is whatever the user passed in when they're searching in the search box, turn that to lowercase as well in case the user uh, put uppercase. And then we're going to check to see if that doesn't equal minus one. So remember, if it equals minus one, that means it's not present. So we, if we check for not equal minus one, that means it's present for the index of, if you remember. So that's going to put that employee into this list. And then we can just do this for everything else. So we can do it for the email or whatever else. So I'm going to copy this, go on a new line and do an R and then paste that. 
and I'm gonna go on a new line again and do an or paste it again and here we can check for the email so if it matches the email the phone and I think we need to do it one more time so I'm gonna do another or pass it again and do the actual job title okay so that way we check for we check this key against the name the email the phone the job title and then we put it into this uh, new array right here so after we loop right here from line 76 we can set that list of employees to this result because then that's represent our new list here so that will work for every time they search so every time they search it would work but the only problem is we need to have a way to reset this in case they put in a key and the key doesn't match nothing on this check here so it doesn't match the name the email or phone number or title of any of those employees here so the way i'm going to do this is to check to see if i have anything in results so i can do if result that length and make sure if it's zero or if I don't have a key so if key is, is not truthy so that means they didn't enter anything it's empty so in that case then I can just call the method to get all the employees again and by calling this method it's gonna reset this employee to the employees from the back end so now we can save all of that so I just have to use this function on some listener on this inbox here so let's go back to the app and let's go back to the template can I scroll up so this is the form right so here's the input for the search right so what we can do here we can add our function so actually let me do it after the type so I can come here and then I can do so that's not going to be a click because we need to listen every time that they type something in so in that case we need to use in ng model change okay so this is going to fire whatever function you set it equal to every time the input change and then we can pass in the employee here and in here we can pass in some key value so we can say value so then now we have to set this key so i'm going to put this on a new line so we don't have this key right but we have this input so we can give this input some local reference. So I'm gonna do hash sign, and that's gonna be key because that's the name that we set here. And I'm just gonna set this equal to ng model. Okay, so now we have this local reference on this form. And of course, we have to pass in this ng model on the form itself. And we have a name which is key, and we have ng model, and then we pass it in here. So instead of using the form here, we could use the form here and then put it on the form and then call this function, but we're just doing it on the input itself because you can also put a reference on the input itself and then you can access the same value on that input. So if we save all of this and go back, I'm gonna refresh this just to be safe. So if I do Daniel, you can see it's refreshing. And let's see if I can do some console log for this so you can see what's happening. So if I check this key here, I can just do console.log and then pass in the key. So whatever key that they pass in, which is whatever input they put in the um, input form and save it, let it reload. And let's inspect that. Let's go to the console, clear this and now oops it's still loading so if i do d you can see it's typed d a daniel you can see it's filtering so that's how this works but there's another way we could do this we could actually um have this in the back end and then you know filter it in the back end and then call it in the back end and then get the response but that's just an extra load on our server and doing it this way is a lot easier so that's pretty much everything. Obviously there's a lot going on here and I would probably need to take a little bit more time to explain like what all of these things is doing. But again, I'm assuming you're a little bit familiar with um, Angular. This app is very minimal, so there's not really a lot going on here. Well, maybe, but uh, in reality, if you look at actual you know, enterprise application and things like that, there's not really a lot going on here. We just have a few functionalities we can add 
you know, edit and then delete and then search. So those are pretty simple standard functionality. And I just wanted to give you guys an idea of how you can build a simple little application, but then you try to stick to best practice and do things the right way. So I hope you enjoy this and all of the code is in the description and I'll see you guys in the next one.